Hi, welcome. What I want to talk about today is actually downsizing our neutral conductor or sizing our neutral conductor. So the Canadian Electrical Code allows us to actually reduce the size of that conductor there because it's not always going to be seeing that full ampacity or the full load. So the code book tells us that it has to be big enough to carry the unbalanced load. Meaning I would have to do the calculation and make sure that it can carry the unbalanced load. But a lot of times, because we have so many line-to-line -line loads, that that unbalanced load is going to be a little bit smaller. So if that's the case, the code book is going to allow us to reduce the neutral size. So what it says is we cannot reduce for what are called uh, electric discharge lighting, so lights with transformers, things like that. We also cannot downsize for non-linear loads in a three-phase four-wire system. So right here we're talking a pretty basic, probably 120-240 system. Uh, and let's just do a quick example because what it tells us is if provided you have no non-linear loads or no electric discharge lighting, what you can do is other than 200 amps, so everything exceeding 200 amps, you can reduce to 70% of the or the capacity. So how that looks is kind of something like this. So basic example, no electric discharge lighting, no nonlinear loads. If we had 400 amps. What it tells us is other than the first 200 amps, you can uh, apply a demand factor of 70%. So what we need to do is we need to minus that 200 amps because we cannot apply a demand factor to that, which gives us a remainder of, in this case, 200 amps. Right? Not always going to be 200 amps. We multiply that by the 70% demand factor. That's the demand factor. Right? And that is going to give us, uh, in this case, 140 amps. So we've uh, applied a demand factor to everything exceeding 200 amps. What we need to do now is we need to add back in that original 200 amps that we took out. In this case, it's going to give us 340 amps. Now this 340 amps becomes the required ampacity of our neutral conductor, meaning we are going to go to table 2 or table 4 to size our neutral conductor for our neutral but what we're going to need to do is we're actually going to take this 400 amps to size our uh, or table 4. That's going to be to size our HOTS because our HOTS are going to tell you that or our ungrounded conductors and our grounded conductor is going to be sized based off of that. So it can get a little bit more complicated. Uh, let's say hypothetically if you did have that electric discharge lighting, which would be neutral or um, fluorescent lights, things like that. So basically how that would work is let's say we had 720 amps, including, uh, including 100 amps of electric discharge lighting. So if that was the situation and I had that, what I would have to do is I would take my 720 amps, Right? I cannot apply a demand factor to my electric discharge lighting, so I'm going to minus my 100 amps of electric discharge lighting. I'm also going to minus that 200 amps, which I cannot apply a demand factor to 200 amps of that uh, load. That's going to give me, in this case, 420 amps. Now, this 420 amps is what I can apply a demand factor to, so I'm going to multiply it by 70% which gives me, in this case, 294 amps. Then what I need to do is I have to add back in my 100 amps. I need to add back in my 200 amps. And in this case, I get 594 amps. Now that is the required opacity of my neutral conductor. So I would size my neutral conductor based off of 594. My HOTS would be based off of that 720. Then I would size those on table 2 or table 4. And then of course using tables 8, 9, and 10 to size my conduit because not all the conductors are the same size. Uh, make sure you're referencing your codebook for this. There's a couple other little sub rules that are going to come into play. 
Uh, but for the most part, this is your basic neutral sizing calculation to figure out the required ampacity of the neutral conductor. Thanks for watching.